Welcome to Celebrating Act Two with Hollywood historian Manny Pacheco. Hey, Manny, great to see you again. Hey, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly are. Hey, Manny, I was watching a classic movie the other day, Mary Poppins. Fabulous, fabulous mm -hmm. music. Everything about it is great, but the music made me think of the Sherman Brothers. They wrote music, m mega hits for how many Disney movies? I don't know, 20? Oh, just more? tons, yeah. Just, just, a, just a litany of great um, movie music. And of course, we recently lost the second of the Sherman Brothers. The first right. one ever died a number of years ago, probably, um, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. But Richard Sherman just passed away. And, um, uh, you know, for some reason, when we talk about great comp composers and compositions, in Hollywood's golden age, why would we ever leave off the Sherman Brothers? <laughs> oh, you can't, you can't. You really, really can't. And, um, but let me just start by saying, you know, because I am a forgotten Hollywood guy, that they b began their career writing pop music <laughs> before they collaborated with Disney. Like what? Do you know any of their tunes? Well, yeah, I, I know a couple of them. One of them actually went to number one on the charts. <laughs> Twice. Really? Twice. What was that? <laughs> you're 16, you're beautiful, and you're mine. No wow. kidding. Really? Yeah. yeah, they wrote that in 1960. And then, of course, in 1973, it became a hit again for Ringo Starr. So yeah. the Beatles even have a tie to the Sherman Brothers. <laughs> I, I, you know, I would have, I would have guessed Neil Sedaka on that one. Yeah, you yeah. know, that's a good guess. But most of Neil Sedaka's stuff was written by a Carol King and Gary Goffin. So, yeah, I, it, he didn't write his own stuff. Yeah. But they also wrote once they once they got together with Disney, um, one of the things that they were good at. So they went right ahead and, and wrote up a, a top 10 song for Annette Funicello, Tall Paul. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, the Sherman brothers were quite versatile. And like many composers of the day, they like to write pop songs as well as a movie music or or Broadway music. A, a lot of a lot of uh, composers have done that over the years. So that I mean, Johnny Mercer comes to mind. Sure. But uh, but the Sherman brothers actually had a pop hit career. <laughs> wow, that's but how did they get connected with the Disney? Because they, they, they were sort of like. In fact, they made a movie of uh, Mary Poppins, The Making of, and I think that they oh, were featured there. They sure did. Uh, that was a, a really fun movie, actually, and it really was uh, a great movie for Emma Thompson and Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, uh, Saving Mr. Banks, that was the name yes. of the movie. But you're right about that, Art. Um, they, uh, I, they got together with Disney um, the, the way, you know, most people, they pitched him. They 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 had some ideas for for some of their um, the movies and for the TV show obviously and um, it all worked out. I mean, if you think about it, that that Disney theme that you hear uh, every Sunday night on television is a Sherman Brothers composition. So I think it it started with a television show and then moved on to the movies and then ended with um, believe it or not the amusement parks. Huh. Well, you know, uh, you mentioned pop music. Um, a lot of the Sherman Brothers songs in the movies, the famous songs from the movies, have a very pop uh, contemporary feel to them. And they are not uh, like some other movies are more orchestral or more classical feeling to them. Uh, the Sherman Brothers, I think, might have gotten short shrift in the credit department because so much of their music was so easy to listen to, so easy to play and repeat and very pop. Well, here's the thing. They had to live under the Disney umbrella. So everything, you know, starts with Disney, ends with Disney. And of course the names come up and, and but still you, you start with Walt Disney before you talk about anybody else. And so that's what you mean by the short shrift. But keep in mind also the Disney didn't begin and end with the Sherman Brothers. They started with a litany of composers prior to the Sherman Brothers. I mean, obviously, the music that was written for um, uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and Pinocchio, all of those, you know, all of those great, great tunes that you hear in the 1930s and 1940s yeah. were not written by the Sherman Brothers. I mean, that all started 
in the late 50s, early 60s. So, um, so yes, you're right. And as far as the orchestral uh, thing you mentioned, I mean, I call that, of course, the um, the Max Steiner effect, because once Max Steiner established this whole orchestral idea of movies and making them bigger than life, a lot of composers copied yeah. that, that formula, that blueprint. Yeah. And and you're right. The Sherman Brothers were more of a pop pop uh, type of com- compositions that they created were very, very hummable. I mean, oh, who, does, who, doesn't, who can't sing uh, Winnie the Pooh <laughs> <laughs> or, or the Bare Necessities from the Jungle Book? I mean, yeah. these are songs that are very hummable, very simple. They're designed for children. That's yeah. the key. They're, they're not. Yes. Adults will buy the product. They will invest into the movies. They will buy the the gear for Christmas for the kids. But yeah. but but at, at the end of the day, they were they were catering to children. So the the tunes had to be simple. Yeah. And they had to be memorable, and they were. And none better, as you referenced, um, than of course Mary Poppins. I mean, Mary Poppins was quite oh. a. Uh, you know, quite an achievement, I think. I mean, this is when they won their Academy Awards for the score, the overall score of Mary Poppins. And then, of course, the best song of the year, Chim Chimery, which yeah. is just just a fabulous song. I mean, we can always talk about supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. And, Easy for you to say. Yeah, a, a spoonful <laughs> of sugar. But Chim Chimery is, I mean, it's up there with one, all the great classics that have won Oscars over the years. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the, the Sherman Brothers are worth uh, remembering, let's put it that way, and honoring because they had such a long career, did so much, and I didn't even know they did pop songs like that. Yeah, and but let's not forget the great tunes they did for Disneyland and the Disney theme parks. Mm. I mean, I, I think some of my favorite Dis, uh, Sherman Brothers tunes are from the theme park, although I do love Winnie the Pooh. I, I, mean, I can do, sing with did they do oh, it's a small world? Is are they responsible they, for a small world? Yes, they did. The, it's a small oh, world. Yeah, and uh, they also did the, that wonderful tune from the Carousel of Progress. Remember, it's a great. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow. There's a great big beautiful yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's it, it's such a great positive futuristic song that they placed in Tomorrowland, and of course, it still plays at uh, the Walt Disney theme park in Orlando, because that's where the Carousel of Progress ended up. So people can hear the Sherman Brothers every single day. I also believe uh, they did another of my favorite tunes that nobody ever talks about, but they also had the hit, well, the hit for the amusement park, not a hit record, uh, in the Tiki 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 room. (laughs) (laughs) That would be one of your favorites. That would be one of my favorites, yeah. and it is. <laughs> so, I mean, the list just goes on and on. Bed knobs and broomsticks. I mean, yeah. I'm sure they even wrote for that darn cat. I, I mean, you know, at any time the Disneys uh, had a, a movie coming out in the early 60s, you can bet that the score included a Sherman Brothers tune or two. Uh, one more thing I want to mention on a personal note. I actually met Richard Sherman. It was for a holiday event, and he was the conductor of a symphonic orchestra orchestra that were doing Christmas tunes. Um, I got I got to shake his hand, and it, it was really a thrill. But I, I will say one other thing: also there on stage, and she's still alive, if you can believe this, was June Lockhart. What? And, really? Yeah, she's, I think she's ninety nine at this point. I but love some, her. I would say some seven or eight years ago, I actually met. June Lockhart and Richard Sherman. <laughs> what a treat! That's a treat. I mean, I got to tell you, I, I I get goosebumps even just talking about it right now. Yeah. Well, God bless him. Very, very, very quiet, very kind, very, uh, 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 very respectful. Very, just a, just an iconically decent individual. Well, this has been fun talking about. You know, it's really. Uh, talking about Richard Sherman is like so many composers of, of uh, other, you know, there's always the, the big ones that you seem to remember, but there's dozens of really talented people who who have, uh, you remember their music, but you have no idea who it came from. 
And uh, so they, he and his brother certainly made their mark on the world. And their tunes will last with us and our children forever. Yeah, and thank you for not singing It's a Small World, because that would have been stuck in my head all day long. <laughs> We're, I'm going to call you later. I'm going to put it on your voicemail. It'll kill oh! you. <laughs> oh anyway, my God. thank you, Manny, for another great review of some forgotten uh, and not so uh, long ago Hollywood, but some forgotten names that we will always remember the result of their creative uh, genius. Uh, if not, uh, that it was them who did it. So anyway, thank you. It was a nice walk down memory lane. Thank you. And let me just leave you with, there's a great big beautiful tomorrow. <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.